Welcome to this video series about Code Academy. I am the coding teacher and I'm here to teach you how to code. This is the start of a multi-part video series which will be a companion to CodeAcademy.com. I'm going to talk about um, basically what I'm going to do in this series of videos. The main thing I'm going to do is just explain a little bit the exercises in case you're stuck. I'm going to explain what's going on. If you don't you know, have issues with an exercise, I suggest you skip that video. Um, and what I'm going to do in this particular introductory video is try to... Um, Basically, you know, Code Academy is a fantastic resource, but I feel sometimes they assume you know stuff that you might not know. And what I'm going to do in this particular uh, video is I'm going to provide context. And actually, in every video, I'm going to provide some context and fill in some of those gaps of things that don't necessarily get said in concrete terms in Code Academy and that, you know, that they're trying to make you learn, but they don't necessarily spell them out for you. I'm going to try to do that for you. And in this intro video, I'm going to spell out a couple of the most important things that I think, um, you know, might have been missed in the first 12 videos. Um, the video naming convention for going forward for this series will be, you know, if I'm making a video on, on, on exercise four, it'll be getting started with coding 14 out of 28. I might skip some videos here and there. If, if one of them doesn't have, like, certainly I would not have made a video for this, you know, this console that log, they're just teaching you about a specific command, which is console.log, and there's no need to for me to comment on it. Um, so basically, one, I want to provide some, you know, explanation right now. What exactly is Code Academy doing? Obviously, you know that you're learning how to code, and you're typing some code into this area right here, and res you're seeing results in this area right here. But, you know, what does that all mean? How does that tie into anything real? I'm going to show you right now. I'm in Chrome. If I hit F12, that brings up my console. And in my console, I'm going to show you that any of the of the things that I have up there, like this one, for example, I can actually type in the console and it'll, you know, log into the console the value of 15 greater than 4, which is true. If I have um, you know, another thing here, our x equals 10 greater than 10, that's going to be false. You know, don't get tripped up by this undefined. A lot of students initially get tripped up by that undefined. That just means that this whole thing, this whole statement that you typed in as a whole did not have a value. But if you do X, you see that the value in there is false indeed as, as, as you would have expected it to be. So JavaScript is the language of the browser. What you're doing in CodeAcademy.com is write in a language that the browser can understand just as well as if you were doing it in here inside this console or inside a script in a web page. However, obviously, it's much nicer to have your, you know, code coloring um, and the fact that in here you don't have to go line by line or press shift enter between lines and then you can save and submit code like that without having to retype it. It's just a more user-friendly way to learn how to code than the actual straight console inside developer tools, this one. Um, a couple of things that I want to cover about prior uh, videos. In this one, in 5 out of 8, you get a reference error when you type eggplant, just like you get a reference error if you type, type eggplant in here. Why does that happen? Basically because JavaScript is a language and it's expecting any word that you type like this without quotes. If it's not a reserved word of the language, like var or if or for, or while and so on, then JavaScript is going to think that that's a variable. And if it tries to access a variable like that and you've never defined it before, you're going to run into problems. You're going to go into more detail on what variables are later on. But um, I just wanted to give you guys a, a preamble of what that is, of why that error came about. The next thing I want to talk about is this, you know, this whole thing that you have in, in, in exercise 11. This whole thing with, um, I'm coding like a champ dot length greater than 10. So obviously, you know, this is a string. And if you do dot length of the string, you get the length of the original string, which if you count them, I don't know, I don't want to count that, but obviously that's greater than 10. And if you go into here and you type that same statement, you get the value, which is true. So this whole thing is true. And anything that has a value can be stored in a variable. You could say r y equals that. And then when you ask, what is the value of y, you would obviously get true because that was the value that you stored inside of it. So basically, you know, the last concept I'm going to cover in this video, variables are 
basically like little buckets where you're telling JavaScript, hey, I'm going to have this little bucket called X or called Y or called whatever name you want to give the variable, and I'm going to put a value inside there for you to remember. That's all the variables are. And that's what I did when I typed when I type var y equals this, I said, okay, JavaScript, I'm going to have a little bucket called y that's going to be capable of storing a value, and I'm going to put the value true in there. And the last thing before I leave you guys, the last thing I want to do before I leave you guys, don't mind all of these errors, by the way. It's just because I have add-ons that block all sorts of content. Last thing I'm going to say before I leave you guys is I'm going to teach I'm, I'm a teacher and a developer. I'm not an elite level textbook writer. So I'm almost certainly going to say a bunch of stuff that if you nitpick it, it's wrong. But with that in mind, I don't want you to take anything I say as gospel. But I also, I'm asking you, nitpicking everything I say is not what the point of this video series is. The point of this video, seri of this video series is for beginners to learn how to code. And I am sharing what I have bound to be some of the best ways that people can wrap their mind around these concepts, even though initially they're not 100% correct. You know, there's a saying that the best coaches lie to you, and that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get you to learn, not bore you to death with super nitpicky explanations that cover all the minutia. And uh, that is it for this video. I hope it has been uh, informative, and uh, I hope you're looking forward to the rest of them. And that is all for today.